hello friends how are you doing hope your preparations are going in a full throttle so without wasting any time let's jump on to the present video in this video we're going to discuss some economics and some topics of development economics so let's start uh, so let's start with the countries as uh, economies we have three types of economies as of present number one is capitalistic economy where the major industry is in the hands of capitalists industrialists and government uh, is just to oversee the whole process right and the best example is usa then we have state economy state economies government acts as a regulator also and government has many industries in its hands okay these days in the present scenario we do not have a pure state economy per se but yes there are examples like soviet uh, union former ussr then uh, we have uh, former china china in the past 1940s 50s okay and yes we can say north korea can be an example of state economy right now then we have mixed economy mixed economy uh, is like government acts as a regulator it makes policies plus it has certain industry certain sensitive industries in its in its hands and private players also have their say so example is our country india India is like defense is in government hands right now. Okay, defense industries. Yes, our uh, country is uh, tilting towards uh, the pro market regime, like tilting towards capitalistic economy. But it is a mix of uh, state plus capitalistic economy. Okay. Also, uh, ma ma major countries are uh, mixed economies uh, in the present scenario most of the companies then we have sectors of economy number one is primary sector then we have secondary sector then we have tertiary sector primary sector as we all know it's agriculture forestry fishing mineral sector which makes use of its natural resources primarily okay it's called the primary sector then we have secondary sector secondary sector is the industries which makes use of the raw materials which we gather which we get from primary uh, sector right like industries we have uh, food processing industries we get food from primary industries then we have uh, you know steel making industry we get iron from primary industry then we have tertiary industry tertiary industry is basically service industry like we have it banking telecom bpos and so many industries okay a question may come you will be you may be given some examples and you will be asked to uh, which of the following is a tertiary industry which of the following is a secondary industry okay then we jump on to an important topic national income national income is determined by two or three factors but the primary two are gdp and gnp now what is gdp gdp the definition says is the final goods and services produced within the boundaries of a nation cross domestic product during one year it's annual okay now within the boundaries of nation anything any service or any product which is being produced within the boundaries of a nation be it a product of an indian industry or a foreign industry but it is being produced in the like we have uh, so many foreign industries uh, foreign companies are operating here like uh, take the example of honda okay honda is a foreign company okay it's a japanese co company but the products it is making in india it comes it comes under the gdp of our country then we have gross national product this is by the citizens of a nation it means that uh, it is the internal produce also plus external income also like uh, there are many industries in india which are like bajaj is operating in africa okay and it is producing so many bikes in africa but it, since it is an indian company so the produce will be included in gnp okay got it so the exports imports everything is included here then we have economic growth economic growth is a quantitative concept it is a growth in economic activity of a country okay like uh, like gdp is increasing growth rate by the way growth rate is the increase in gdp per year percentage increase so the gdp is increasing money is coming so it says only about the quantitative aspects like per capita income is increasing how is it increasing 
is it uh, affecting the country's infrastructure country's well-being we do not know about from the economic growth then we have economic development which is important it is the improvement of quality of life of people along with growth okay it shows uh, if the infrastructure is spending infrastructure is improving quality of uh, life of people is improving healthcare is improving or not okay opportunities jobs are they improving or not so it is quantitative plus a qualitative more of a qualitative concept right then we have a human development index it is produced by UNDP okay as uh, uh, as is clear from the name it shows the development index of human well-being okay and it is measured on these three parameters like standard of living knowledge and life expectancy okay standard of living like the basic parameter like employment opportunities and all then from knowledge we have education school enrollment how many children are being enrolled and uh, you know what is the education status okay how the education is improving and life expectancy how a life expectancy can be improved by improving the health facilities okay and india fares uh, badly yes it is improving the rank is improving india improved five ranks and uh, in the 2014 survey of uh, human development index the report of which was released in 2015 india was at 130th place and norway tops the list then we have economic reforms in india 1991 they were happened indian economy was in a very bad shape okay because it was a closed economy no major exports were there no major imports were there we were like uh, we wanted to be self-sufficient but it could not work okay we had a lot of PSUs which were uh, you know facilitating the needs of our people but somehow we were lagging then we had a gulf we had to face a gulf war in 1991 due to which there was a problem of petroleum also and it was a major export so the prices of petroleum increased okay and due to this gulf war many professionals who were working in gulf they had to come back so many of you must have watched a movie airlift so it is about the same same thing okay as a result india's forest forex reserves went down because we had to purchase more costly uh, petrol okay so balance of payment crisis it happened and then imf had to bail out we had to call imf to bail bail us out but it had put some conditions on us like rupee devaluation we had to devaluate the rupee we had to decrease the value of rupee okay that's why now we have 68 before that we have 20 then after devaluation it became 42 like for example i don't know the uh, you know exact figures and it is not that important also reduction in import tariffs so basically you have to open your market for imports as well as for obviously if you open the market for imports exports will also be improved government expenditure had to be cut down so you know you have to curtail the unnecessary expenditure tax reforms and excise duties to be high to ramp up the government revenues on products okay so these were the steps which were required from imf side then we have these three important topics liberalization privatization and globalization liberalization means open the markets to private and foreign companies which is uh, now the case we are very much open to all the you know players all the foreign companies private companies privatization is disinvestment in psus denationalization like decreasing the stake of government government uh, uh, was required to you know uh, have faith on private players and to decrease the stake in the psus and other companies on which it, it was uh, operating then we have globalization globalization is economic integration among nations that means no trade barriers increase the trade okay uh, reduce the tariffs barriers and all so these are three important terms okay then we have inflation inflation is mainly two types cost push and uh, demand pull inflation cost push inflation is the increase in cost of uh, a product due to increase in inputs like uh, for example biscuits it uses gra it uses flour okay it it uses atta or maida 
an increase in price of maida obviously it increases the price of biscuit increases up in increase in price of labor increases the price of input so general price will increase and that that is uh, when inflation will also increase then we have demand pull inflation demand is increased while the supply is same okay and it increases due to the increase in purchasing power of people which increases due to the increase in salaries okay like seventh pay commission was released so purchasing power was increased so inflation <clears throat> is increased in some of the things then we have effects of inflation it re reduces the savings of people obviously it is uh, much obvious then it dampens the investment because if prices are uh, high people will invest less people would like to uh, hold the cash in their bank accounts it pushes the interest rates obviously when inflation uh, increases then uh, the banks they will push the interest rates high so that people may not uh, able to take much money on loans okay and that is why people will encourage to put their money in banks so that it cools down then we have reduces in long term growth starting in starting growth increases but long term effect it reduces the long term growth okay then we have depreciation in currency obviously currency will be depreciated the value of our currency will be depreciated which makes imports costlier okay so imports will be costlier petroleum will be costlier and exports become cheaper and unattractive why would uh, one want to export when he is getting a good price in his own country okay then gdp deflator it is the ratio of gdp at current prices and gdp at constant prices just remember this line okay and it shows the general price change in the prices of final goods and services okay just remember this line then we have wholesale price index wholesale price index is the indicator of uh, prices at the wholesale level it is much of uh, it has much of the importance to industrialists not for us okay and it also shows uh, it also helps in determining the inflation at general level and it is published by economic advisor in the ministry of commerce and industry on monthly basis that you have to remember okay then we have consumer price index these are of two major types right now uh, cpi industrial workers and cpi agricultural laborers cpi industrial workers as we have already discussed in another video it uh, it helps to calculate the da which uh, determines the salaries okay which determines the increase in salaries okay then we have uh, cpi agricultural laborers it uh, shows the rural uh, you know inflation or uh, change in prices and this is at the retail level okay now we have uh, deflation this is decline in uh, prices then we have overheating of economy remember this term demand over and demand overshoots price supply and prices they increase okay and uh, growth increases the income of people which increases the demand so this is the reason why demand overshoots supply and then that that is when we call overheating of economy and um, what is the effect ultimately it will increase the inflation only okay and decrease the growth then we have fiscal drag fiscal drag is a concept wages increase so many people goes into the next bracket like your wage increase from 9 lakh to 10 lakh now you are in the 20 percent of uh, tax credit okay your if you consider your tax are increased much more than your salary so tax liability li rises and the less you will have less purchasing power okay then we have inflation targeting to achieve price stability as an ultimate objective of monetary policy which is the responsibility of RBI and uh, gov government more of RBI we have seen newspaper some fight between RBI and government on this issue because government also focuses on uh, growth then we have monetary and fiscal policy have to converge to have a good and right inflation targeting okay guys so thank you for your awesome response for my previous videos i'm very thankful and it motivates me to make other videos also and please subscribe to my channel and uh, please remember this life begins at the end of your comfort zone though please start your hard work and be succeed be you know get the jobs and all and you know be successful in your life so with that i would like to say thank you bye bye